Welcome everyone, hope you can hear us. We're just going to um, give it a couple of uh, short moments to see if we can wait for some additional attendees, but we're super excited to welcome you all this morning. Won't be much longer, we'll just wait a couple more moments. Well, good morning, everyone. We think we'll make a start. Um, others will continue to join us, but we're delighted you've um, able to log on this morning to our Tasmanian webinar. My name is Annabelle Sweetman, and I'm here with my delightful colleague, Natalie Ellis. Um, we'll just introduce ourselves, and then we will take you on a little tour of Tassie. So we just wanted to acknowledge that we understand you're all um, under some level of lockdown at the moment and we hope you're all travelling okay. Our thoughts are with you um, and hoping that as of Sunday, the restrictions will start to ease again. So we feel very fortunate over here in Tassie that um, we're living pretty normal lives at the moment. So yeah, thinking of you all and thanks again for taking the time out this morning. So as I mentioned, my name's Annabelle. I'm the fortunate one that gets to look after the New Zealand market here for Tourism Tasmania. And together with Nat, we work on um, the training and education of our travel trade. So we um, are excited to start off with this webinar and hope to continue our comms with you um, as we um, continue our campaign, which I'll tell you about a little more during the course of the presentation. I've been with Tourism Tasmania 15 years now, and um, I feel very fortunate to, to live in this beautiful state uh, with my family and to work in this great organisation with people like Nat. <laughs> Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Nat? Yeah, thanks, Belle. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, lovely to have you with us today. Um, as Belle said, we're part of the Conversion and Global team, and my role is the Training and Events Coordinator for, for the team. Um, working with the Aussie Specialist Program and we have our own Tassie Specialist Program for the domestic trade and also doing um, these webinars for, for the international groups as well. So it's great to be here today to tell you a bit about Tassie. I'm a born and bred Tasmanian so I love to talk about Tassie. It's my favourite subject so look forward to getting into it. Um, but we'll just do a little bit of housekeeping today just um, before we start off. Um, you will see there's a question box in there so I've got our colleagues Debbie and, da and Danielle online as well to help answer any questions for us today. So feel free to pop any questions in there. We will come to a Q&A at the end, um, but any, any problems that you have at all, just please use that box to, to do that. Um, we'll email a copy of the presentation out to you post, um, post webinar so that you'll have a copy of that for you as well. And excitingly, we have three winter packs to give away, so stay on to the end um, so that you can find out a bit more about that. We'll be doing that at the Lucky Doral Prize post webinar, but we'll tell you a bit more about that at the end. So we're going to turn our webcam off now so you can see our lovely presentation and uh, we'll, we'll begin. Thank you. Great, so we're excited to um, to be in market for the, the first time and we're going to just tell you a little bit about our Come Down for Air brand. So Nat, would you like to, to explain a little? Great, thanks, Bill. Uh, so just before Bill does go into what we've been doing in New Zealand, I just wanted to give you a bit of a background to what Come Down for Air and our brand tagline, what it is. So it's a subtle play on the phrase of come up for air, which we often use to describe like taking a break, taking a breath or stepping away from a busy, routine. Tasmania is the perfect location to break free, so we're, we're inviting our visitors to come down for air. 
So we're super excited to be in the midst of our biggest brand awareness activity in New Zealand ever. And we're hoping that some of you will have seen some of this, this um, these apps around um, Auckland in particular, but certainly across, across the country. So we're investing over a million dollars in launching our Tasmanian brand, Come Down For Air, um, with a focus on driving awareness and demand in the first, first instance. We launched on 17th of January into a two month marketing activity, which is starting to slow down at the moment, but we will have always on activity and looking to um, do a second and third burst. So look out for our um, extended campaign activity. So we've had a strong Auckland focus in the first instance, but also featuring many regional areas across New Zealand. Our main aim is to appeal to the Kiwis with, um, with unique experiences that are distinct from New Zealand, um, but also from mainland Australia. So media and digital activations um, are leading consumers to a dedicated New Zealand microsite, which we'll send to you. Um, but it's a great spot for Kiwis to be able to go and, and um, understand what more they can do in Tassie, which is what we found to be our biggest gap. So we're also planning to leverage Tourism Australia's planned activity, some of their current digital activity with NZME, New Zealand Herald. Um, and there's a Tasmanian hub and supporting articles there as well, which seems to be tracking well. So we will continue to be in market long term where, where this is not a flash in the pan appearance. Um, so get used to seeing us and um, we want to be your, your go to for, for Tassie. Here are some more of our, our brand assets. Um, so we're hoping that they'll resonate with some of our Kiwi friends, helping them understand what we have on offer. Just trying to be a little quirky and appeal to the New Zealand sense of humour. So we've here are some of our takeover assets. Um, maybe you've seen them as you've driven through town or waited for a bus, maybe seen some TV ads or been to the cinema or even wandered through a shopping plaza or picked up the newspaper. That one there you can see was on the New Zealand Herald. Um, and we've been in the Britomart Towers, the Botany Town Centre, uh, Mount Wellington, Queen Street, Ponsonbury Road, North Shore, Kingsland. So we've, we've hopefully been um, prolific across, across Auckland in particular. Some of our content partnerships I just thought I'd mention with, um, with New Zealand Herald, we did a 12 page lift out, which um, did a lot on sort of offered people more of an in-depth insight into what they could do in Tassie, some of which we'll go through today. We also did a content partnership with Urban List and um, there's some great articles in there with, with our ads um, and we're super excited to be able to continue on with, with both those partnerships. So why Tasmania? What sets us apart? It's probably a question that many Kiwis are asking in, in contemplating considering Tasmania. So our research tells us that we're considered a new destination for many Kiwis, which is super exciting. Something different from the Gold Coast and cities of Sydney and Melbourne that they know so well. Many think we're very similar to New Zealand, just a similar version, smaller version, I should say. And we're flattered by this, but we like to think that we're same, same, but different. We're both islands. We both inhabit friendly locals. We offer amazing food and wine exceptional past and living historical experiences. We've got stunning, beautiful wilderness areas. We strongly believe that with many of the things that the Kiwis are looking for, both similar to their homeland and unique to Tassie. And Nat will talk us through some of these now. Great. Uh, let's start off with our wildlife because they definitely set us apart. Tasmania is home to lots of unique animals. In fact, some of Tasmanian wildlife exists nowhere else on earth, which one of the things we just love about our animals here. Most of you have probably heard of the endangered Tassie devil, but we also have platypus, wallabies, echidnas, wombats, spotted quolls, and amazing bird and sea life. We're very fortunate to be able to see them in their natural habitat. I was actually only looking over my back fence the other, last weekend and there was just an echidna wandering past and I, lots of wallabies around my house as well. So always very fortunate to be able to, to see these in their natural habitat. And there's also a range of wildlife sanctuaries across the island that offer tours and close encounters. About 40% of the island is protected as national parks, reserves and UNESCO World Heritage Areas. And remarkably, these wild places are easily accessible. You can hike the tallest sea cliffs in the Southern Hemisphere and breathe some of the purest air in the world. In World Heritage Wilderness, walk in the valleys where towering hill and pines have been growing for thousands of years, where rivers meet rare temperate rainforests and snow peak mountains shadow button glass plains. 
I'm with Art and Culture. Tasmania has a long tradition of creativity and an active community of artists, designers, makers and performers, often inspired by Tasmania's natural and political landscape. Some of you may have heard of MONA, which is the Museum of Old and New Art. Many say it's helped put Tasmania on the map. The provocative private museum near Hobart presents an alternative, alternate universe of ideas and expression. It's a must for any Tasmanian itinerary. And my favourite is to take the ferry up the River Derwent up to, to get the museum and, and visit it that way. There is a diverse range of galleries, museums and events across the islands, something for everyone. We have an amazing calendar of events spread across the calendar year which draw crowds from across the globe. And one of, one of my favourites is Dark Mofo, a celebration of art, food, winter and our Tasmanian culture. It's such a great way to um, to sort of um, you know have a have a something to look forward to in winter, isn't it? Oh, you definitely. can go and meet your friends down by the water yeah, and experience all the art and culture. Certainly a highlight on all Tasmanians on the list in the middle of winter, that's for sure. And then our history and heritage. While Tasmania, you can walk in the footsteps of Palawa, our Tasmanian Aboriginal on a guided walk to immerse yourself in the culture, stories, and practices passed down from hundreds of generations. And much of Tasmania's rich and complex history can be seen throughout the state, in towns, cities, gardens and homes. This picture here is actually taken on Mariah Island, which is sub, such historic significance to Tasmania and such a beautiful place to visit for either just for the day or for a couple of days as well to, to, to really immerse yourself into it. And you can get right up to, close to animals over there oh, too, definitely. can't you? I was only there um, at the end of last year and the wombats were just, yeah, just amazing how many you can see right close, although we do keep our distance from them as well. <laughs> And five of Australia's 11 World Heritage convict sites are in Tasmania and more than 1,000 convict sites across the island. Port Arthur Historic Site is one of the most visited attractions and situated in the southeast of the islands. It's also a must in the Hobart itinerary. It's only an hour and a half away. <coughs> Excuse me. So food and drink, we love to eat in Tasmania. And like New Zealand, Tasmania has amazing fresh produce. We're so lucky to be able to grow so much food in our region. We have farm gates and local markets, cellar doors, cafes, and loads of restaurants. A growing collection of paddock to plate experiences, tasting trails, wine routes, cooking schools, gourmet walking tours allows travellers to forage, cook, taste, and learn firsthand. And of course, we don't mind a drink either. Not just alcoholic, but we do do have many cellar doors, whiskey trails, cider trails, gin trails, great craft beer. The list goes on and on, and it's easily accessible as well from anywhere in the state. And accommodation. Tasmania offers a variety of accommodation from camping to glamping, to B&Bs and chic boutique mode accommodation from three to star to five premium star hotels. We've also got some new hotels coming online. Uh, we've got Mover Peak, the Crown, Vibe and Verge and Launceston to name a few. I'm also actually doing a Aussie Specialist webinar on the 18th of March for any Aussie Specialists that are online. So we'll be delving more into the new accommodation offerings that we've got in the cities on that. So make sure you register. I'm actually going to check out the new Mover Peak restaurant tonight, Nat. Oh, nice, good. and it's Italian influence. So yes. it'll be lovely. You have to tell me all about it. I will. And then we've got adventure and activity. So, Belle, what would you say is your favourite off of this list here? Oh, look, I'm an avid walker, I have to say, and I've actually been to New Zealand and done quite a bit of walking. So I would welcome, welcome Kiwis to come and experience ours. And I think the beauty of it is, Nat, that you, there's so many options. You could do um, one of our 60 great short walks, which are, you know, from as, as um, short as a kilometre to, you know, multi-day walks. So I really want to do the um, the Overland Track. I'm ashamed to say as a Tasmanian, I haven't done that yet, but that's on, on my list. How about you? Um, I'd probably have to say kayaking, um, whether you just do it on your own or as a guided tour as well. So it'd be one of my favourite pastimes that I do. So sort of the, the coast is so accessible wherever we go in Tasmania or even the lakes. Um, and just to get the kayak out, just to see the, see the world from a different angle, it's just um, one of my favourite things. I do love this shot though of the mountain biking trails up. These are up in the northeast of the state. Um, we've really become a, a world-class destination for mountain biking, haven't we? Yeah, no, that's just an amazing shot too. It's great. So we'd like to be able to help you understand how better to how well how to sell Tasmania. So we're going to go through a few things in the next few slides on how to get here, bits about our weather, how to get around, how long should you recommend, um, and how to find out more. We really hope that you can leave this webinar feeling really confident in how to sell Tasmania or who to contact or where to go for more information. 
So um, the following slides hopefully will, will give you a bit more information, but feel free to send through any questions as they come up. So here's our map of Australia with us as the South Island at the bottom. So in order to get you acquainted with where we're located, Tasmania is at the south of our, our main island, which we often call the mainland. Um, it lies about 250 kilometres across the Bass Strait. Next stop south of here is Antarctica, 3,000 miles away, oh, sorry, kilometres. Um, the main gateways are Hobart and Launceston, which you can see on the map there. Hobart's our capital. And with a one hour flight from Melbourne, 1.5 from Sydney or two hours from Brisbane, you've got the East Coast covered. And as you can imagine, many domestic routes at the moment have changed and, and some are yet to be reinstated. But we do, um, pre-COVID, we were um, had direct flights from Perth and Adelaide. Um, so they'll hopefully be coming online again soon. And whilst there's no direct flight between Auckland and Hobart, Google tells me that, um, excuse me, we just had a little glitch here. Resume slideshow. I'm not sure what's going on there. Sorry about that. Always got to expect a tech issue in a webinar. Um, yeah, just going back to the no direct flights as yet between Auckland and Hobart. You may have heard talk of that. Um, we're hoping that you know there may be some some news. There's certainly discussions going on between our government and yours and um, Access Partners. So we'll just wait and see on that. But Google tells me that it would take three hours and thirty six minutes to get from Auckland to Hobart. Um, so really, for three and a half hours, you could even do a, a long weekend in Tassie. So to that point, we're hoping our campaign will prepare our market for direct flights between Tassie and New Zealand with airline negotiations, as I mentioned, um, and it will make it quicker and easier for, for New Zealanders to come direct to Tassie. The other point, access point, is by the Spirit of Tasmania ferry that sails from Melbourne into the port of Devonport in the north. Uh, that's a nine hour sailing and they offer overnight and day sailings. It's a passenger vehicle um, and it has service, it's serviced with a range of cabin types um, that are available. So what's our weather like now? Do you want to tell us a little? No, oh, today we've got the sun shining. Yesterday we had rain, but uh, we can have all seasons in one day as well. So we always say to pack a jacket and layer up and prepare for all seasons. And um, that's what um, yeah, Tasmanians do as well. Um, and we recommend that highly to our travellers as well. But our seasons are distinct in many ways, especially the lighting. I can, you know, the, the photographs I take, I can normally tell what season it's taking. The lighting is very, very distinct amongst the seasons. Um, and there's always something new to see and taste and feel that makes the Tasmania year-round destination. In summer, you enjoy the beach life and the blooming lavender fields of that amazing purple that shows through those lavender fields in summer. It's just amazing. Springtime, we have the tulips up at the table cake that come alive. You may have seen some images of that. We've got some of the tulips in this photo, but that whole field is just covered amongst the table cake lighthouse. And the, temp the temperatures on this slide that we've got here are averages, but um, we can get days around 30 degrees in summer and we can get to you know, low 20s in the spring as well. So that's sort of just the average that we're taking there um, from what, what, what we've told, but yeah, definitely can sort of range outside that as well. Then there's autumn, this is probably my favourite season. Again, the lighting, the brilliance of the colourings and everything, the turnings of the, of the, the um, of the, the bushes and the, we've got the, our own fagus, which is Australia's only deciduous tree that turns brilliant colours from a yellow to, a, to an orange. It's just absolutely stunning. Um, this can be found like up in places like Cradle Mountain and Mount Field. Um, and then in winter, we do have snowfall fall on the high peaks, but we're not known for our skiing opportunities like we are in New Zealand, but with only a couple of accessible ski slopes on the island, but um, you can sometimes access snow. Um, especially even on our own Mount Wellington that sits behind Hobart. And winter's a time that we celebrate the Solstice Festival, what we talked about earlier with Dark Mofo, um, and we warm up around the hot tubs, the log fires, you know, sipping the mulled wine, and you know, what more do you want to do? Um, rainfall varies significantly across the island, and although we have lush rainforests, our capital city of Hobart is the second driest capital city in Australia behind Adelaide. Well, I think one of the things people certainly on the mainland often say about Tasmania is that we have so many blue sky days in, in over winter. Yeah, definitely. Like especially in winter, you can look out the window and you know it's going to be cold, but um, the picture wouldn't actually give that story. Oh, no. Beautiful, <laughs> crisp, sunny days. So um, we're often the envy of our mainland mainland friends. So I'm going to tell you a little around um, about how to get around 
Tasmania is the perfect self-drive destination. In fact, we would recommend that you um, suggest that to, to all of your clients. <clears throat> Most of Australia's major hire car companies are located at the main airports and in the cities and towns. Um, there's also luxury hire car and motorhome hire available as well. Premium, premium tour, touring is also an option with a number of small personalised operators available and there's group and um, coach touring an option as well. And whilst it is an option, public transport isn't ideal here in Tasmania, so it's not something that we would highly recommend, um, but, but is, is possible. So just to help you understand um, how far it might take to get from some of the, the icon destinations in particular, um, we have included this slide, which we hope will be helpful. And just to let you know that we will be sharing this as a PDF deck, this presentation, so you can refer to it later. Um, but Hobart to Freycinet on the East Coast is roughly two hours and 20 minutes. There is a bit of a general two and a half hour rule around Tassies and their NAT, yeah. um, which, which kind of makes it easy, except when you're accessing the East Coast. Due to the abundance of wildlife in Tassie, we suggest that people drive with caution at all times. It might be worth mentioning to clients, um, but particularly between dusk and dawn. Um, there'll be speed reduction signs around Tassie marking wildlife hotspots. And in some areas, there are even electronic sensors that aim to prevent animals crossing. Um, so you may have heard that, that roadkill um, is quite prolific in Tasmania, but we're doing a lot um, to, to, try and, to try and change that. So talking about road tripping, it's one of the things that we really like to hang our hat on. We are such a great touring destination. In Tasmania, we class a detour as an adventure. And self-drive journeys on our compact island offer the freedom for travellers to find the things that they need, whether it's natural wonders or just inspiration, calm, maybe even some great fish and chips just around the corner. So there are also many things that people never expect. So that's the beauty of, of travelling around. Certainly one of my favourite things, Belle, is just jumping in that car and just seeing where the road takes you and what you can find along the way. Yeah, so yeah, it's so going. true, isn't it, Nat? Even having lived here all my life and still finding new things along the way is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we've actually launched a series of drive journeys. Um, I've popped these into the presentation. And I guess my favourite, Nat, we were talking about this earlier, is would have to be the Great Eastern Drive. It was one of our first journeys to be developed. And I just love it, just getting out on that open road, being able to see the coast, heading up to Freycinet National Park, which is where I take my family camping every year. Um, there's such a dramatic coastline and, and just feel like I have the time and the space to unwind. So that's that's my favourite. How about you? Yeah, that is probably would be up there with my favourite. They're all my favourites, but um, <laughs> so it's hard to pick, but I do love that coastline. Um, heading into Swansea is just one of my favourites, but also the Northern Forage. I was up there for my summer holidays this year and um, spent a bit of time around the, the Nush at Stanley there. You can see, but we've also got a beautiful coastline up there, probably a bit more dramatic than, than the East Coast and um, just the cliff spaces, the uh, just the, what we have accessible to waterfalls and just some, some just some awesome scenery and just amazing food as well. So we thought we'd just indulge you in a few scenic shots coming up. This is Freycinet National Park that I was referring to and you can see that beach down there. That's where I go camping with my family and hike up around those spots and there's pro prolific wildlife around and the wildflowers are absolutely stunning. Some great um, walks. You can do some really you know, overnight walks as well through there, can't you, Bill? And some, some quite hard walks from where that photo is taken from as well. So that, that's <laughs> called Wine Glass Bay, which many of you may have heard um, and it really does look like yeah. a wine glass from the top of the look out is quite accessible for an easy walk to that too so yeah and then Mount Wellington this is where I take when I have visitors come to to town and this is where I take them to and um, just to give them really that sense of place it sits right behind uh, capital city of Hobart there in Kanani and um, it's just such a easy drive up the mountain you can see for you know far and wide to see where it is great to point out places what directions the things are going and they're everywhere it's a must on any Hobart itinerary isn't yeah, it definitely. and some beautiful walks from up there actually I love taking the kids up for a wander up the top and you can see right out over there you're sort of looking if you were that man standing on the rock you'd be looking right down to the Tasman Peninsula where Port Arthur and um, and some of the historic sites are so you can see how accessible it is from from Hobart some people have actually said that it reminds them of Wellington, New Zealand. 
Uh, Cradle Mountain. And then I, while I was up the northwest um, over summer, I actually went to Cradle Mountain. It was the first time I actually been there in the summertime, and it's it's just as beautiful any time of the year. Um, I walked up to Marion's Lookout, which is six above the lake, um, through Crater Lakes. There's some great walks. You can also do a walk around the lake, which is Dove Lake here that's sitting below Cradle Mountain. That's an easy, quite flat walk that will take a couple of hours to walk around. Um, so yeah, and lots of little walks, lots of wildlife again, lots of wombats, uh, wallabies, and uh, lots of accommodation options just um, sitting outside the national park as well. Yeah it can be from sort of um, three star to five star there just can't it and some cozy cabins as well so yeah. something for everyone there. This is one of my favourites. This is um, a fishing fishing port town on the east, sorry, west coast of Tassie called Strawn. And um, it's a quaint little town, lots of little miners' cottages. Um, and one of the main reasons people visit this town, not only for its beauty and its sort of open, big beaches, ocean beaches, one of my favourites over on that side, you can really feel the roaring 40s winds come at you. But it's a way that you can head into the World Heritage Wilderness Area on one of one of the boats that takes you down there. Um, you can see that one there, the red and white one. Um, there's a couple of other options that take you on a full day or a half day down the Gordon River and it is an absolutely serene exquisite experience isn't it? Yeah that? it's just stunning yeah the waters are just mirror like you just you know had some photographs before and you just don't know which way they go up from the reflection on the river it's just amazing. Yeah so again a highlight there's also a um, a rail experience called the West Coast Wilderness Rail which can take you from Strawn to Queenstown and goes through rainforest it's absolutely beautiful a great one for the family um, but lots to do over in Strawn it does take roughly five hours from Hobart to Strawn but from Cradle Mountain, it's only around an hour and a half to get there. So if you're taking people to, to sending people to Cradle, really, it's only an additional hour and a half. And this is the nut at Stanley that I was talking about earlier as well, where I went um, back in January. Um, there's actually a chairlift, you can't actually see it on this image, but there's a chairlift that goes from um, the base of the nut up to the to the top. Uh, this is a volcanic plug, um, the, what the nut is made out of. Um, but you can walk it, you don't have to chairlift it, you can actually walk it, it's quite a bit of a steep walk up, but um, a lot of people choose, and it's what I did, took the chairlift up and walked down. Um, and you can actually do a circumnavigation of the top of the nut on a walk, and there's lots of platforms and lookouts on the way as you're walking around. So it's a great way to see out to the ocean, back to the, the beautiful town of Stanley as well. It's just, yeah, absolutely stunning. The day I was up there was actually no wind, which I think is the first time I've ever been up the nut where there's no wind, but, um, but it, was, it can be varying temperatures and, and winds up there as well. And did you have some seafood? They do amazing seafood up there. Yes, I have, I have the seafood in Stanley and it's just, yeah, divine. They've got a great pub there, don't they? Yes, I think that they say that everything on the menu is from within 30 or 50 kilometres radius of, of yeah, the pub. Yeah, and apparently bookings are essential, is what I've been told too. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I was super fortunate uh, pre-COVID to be able to head down to this area, the southwest wilderness um, of Tasmania. It is absolutely pristine. It feels like you're the only one in the world. I'm sure you've got plenty of places in New Zealand that feel the same, but um, with Par Avion, which is one of our um, small airline services down here, they take you on a, they will they offer a full day experience where you can walk up to one of those peaks. I think I walked up to one of those smaller ones there. Um, and I was fortunate enough to stay in an overnight camp down there and do some kayaking um, as well. So it was a full sort of immersive experience, absolutely stunning. So that takes us to our wine routes. We couldn't do a presentation without including our wine routes, um, of which there are four main ones. And again, you know, as New Zealanders, we can imagine that, um, you know, many may think that it doesn't get much better than New Zealand. And I, you know, I'm very partial to a New Zealand um, Savvy Blanc. But uh, if you were to follow any one of these wine routes, you could taste cool climate wines at cellar doors, ranging from heritage stables to designer sheds. Tassie's particularly known for its Pinot and um, sparkling wines. However, there's also a range of other cool climates, including Riesling, Chardonnay, Savi Blanc, Cab Sav and Pinot Gris. Each of these routes offers a range of wine styles and Tasmanian wines can be found also in our bars, our restaurants, local grocers all over the state. So there's a fine drop to sample no matter where you are on the island. Yes, love a Pinot Gris. <laughs> that's your yeah, wine that's choice. Yeah, that's my wine to go with. 
Um, our Unordinary Adventures, we've, we've developed a program which we um, decided to create once we did some research around passion travel and what visitors uh, to Tasmania really like to pursue. And we found that we, we've come up with four of our world-class experiences, golf, fly fishing, walking and mountain biking. Some of you may know of Tourism Australia's Signature Experience Program and we feel that these four really complement that program. Um, so whatever your passion, we feel Tasmania is the place, place to, to pursue it. Um, enthusiasts that come to Tassie for golf, any of these um, fly fishing, walking, mountain biking can experience their passion in a way like never before. So we're fortunate to have some some of Australia's best golf courses, Barn Boogle Dunes and Lost Farm, you might have heard of. Um, our fly fishing, especially up in the in the Midlands, is second to none. May may appeal to the Kiwis. Um, walking, we've talked about, and and mountain biking as well. I hear there's a new mountain biking um, uh, park being developed in Queenstown. That if you heard about that one, no, I haven't actually heard. Yeah, that. so up in the northeast of the state, in Derby, there's also one a little further south called Medina, and now one being developed in Queenstown. So um, many, many options. Exciting. Um, and yeah, big shout out and hello to our Aussie specialists that are online today. Um, but those of you that um, may not know about the program or familiar with the program, it, this is Tourism Australia's global online training program and it, it covers uh, the eight states and territories um, across Australia, um, providing you know, travel sellers with um, around the globe with the knowledge and skills to best sell Australia. Uh, as I mentioned, I've got a webinar coming up through the Aussie Specialist Program on the 18th of March. So if you are not already an Aussie Specialist, jump online and um, do the program. Make sure you do the TASI module, of course, and um, look forward to seeing you on the 18th of March. And also just to let you know a bit about the resources that we have available for you as well. Well, uh, as our travel trade and our, our own from Tourism Tasmania. So we have a dedicated trade website, uh, which is www.tassietrade.com.au. We've recently just added a new section to this website that has new resources tools on here. So you can jump on, bookmark the page, check back for regular updates where we put some product updates like hotel openings, things like that. Um, you also find on there a travel, uh, a publication of a travel professionals guide which you also have ha uh, put into the handouts for today along with the presentation so you can download it from there or you can download it directly from the website and it's a great uh, resource to have ready for any Tasmanian booking and inquiries that you get through and help you plan your clients holidays to Tasmania and we also have an image library that you can register you can find access to that through the Tassie Trade website as well we've got a trade video which has some beautiful footage of, of Tasmania just to give you that overall feeling of what what the place and sense of life is like and as Belle mentioned earlier we've got uh, the dedicated New Zealand um, site for www.discovertasmania.com.au slash nz which is a consumer facing website that we've got to as a call to action for our campaign we could also send through um, that great movie we did last year, Nat. Do you want to talk a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so last year, because of um, COVID, we couldn't do our trade event that we normally hold um, within the state, so we made a movie instead. So uh, we had 48 operators and we had a host that went round the um, state, did a bit of tour, tour of Tassie, and um, created um, Tass Talk the Movie, interviewing these 48 products. So it's a great insight into, into them. So that's that lives on our Tassie Trade website and a great resource to to find out a bit more in depth of actually seeing the product. One night in lockdown, you could sit down with a glass of wine and, and watch the movie. It's roughly 90 minutes. So yeah. it'll just give you good, great insight into our products. And this is just an example of the itineraries that we have on Tassie Trade as well. So you can see we've got three, five, seven and 14 days. Um, these are just suggestions of how you could put an itinerary together. Also on the New Zealand um, site that we mentioned through Discover Tasmania, there's some suggested itineraries um, for consumers there. So just another way of, of building together an a Tassie itinerary. And just so you uh, have the resources of what to find out and when uh, anyone is coming to Tasmania, what up to date with the latest restrictions or what is in place and what, uh, what you need to know in that front, uh, we've got the www.coronavirus.tas.gov.au website. So, and there's a coming to Tasmania section for up to date information on, on any restrictions. Uh, there is different passes that you need to apply for to enter into the state, but it's best to visit this, this site and get what the latest information is at that time. 
point in time. Hopefully reciprocal borders won't be too far off, Nat, once we all can get things under yeah. control. Fingers crossed. Okay, so we mentioned at the beginning we have got three Tassie winter packs to give away. So we will um, be drawing names out of a hat, so like a lucky draw, uh, to be able to, to win one of these three packs from anyone that's currently online. So we'll uh, be randomly drawing these from the, those that are in attendance and we'll be in contact with the lucky winners in the coming days and uh, get your postal details and send these across. Great, Nat. So, We'd love to um, invite questions now. We've um, we've talked a lot and maybe a bit too quickly, um, but we hope that it's given you some insights to how how to sell Tassie and what's on offer here. I mean, we could have spent hours talking to you about our favourite places and um, and what else to to do around here. I feel like we didn't even mention our amazing whiskey and gin, or maybe you did, but um, you know, there's so much to explore and experience here in Tassie. And one of the things that I think is really worth worth mentioning is that the proximity makes it of anything. You can be up on the mountain one morning and then by an East Coast beach in the afternoon sipping sipping um, sparkling and eating eating fresh crayfish. So, you know, it's very accessible. Yeah, it's that proximity to everything. Like Bill said, the range of activities you could do in one day or the, or the lack of like, activities you want to do by yourself on a solo beach by yourself as well is always always a good way to, to, um, to spend the day as well. So we have had a couple of questions come through. For those of you who are happy to stay online, we'll, um, we'll just have a look at some of those. So Nat, one of the... Um, the questions I think you've already answered, but does Tasmania have sample itineraries for travelling around the state? And perhaps what is the recommended length of stay in Tasmania? Well, I'd say to everyone, come as long as you can. You know, come for a month, it'll be great. <laughs> um, but I always say, to, if you want to do the whole island, you really, really need at least seven days, but preferably ten. Um, that's to do the whole island. Of course, you can break that down if you wanted to do different regions or and do like the east coast or the west coast, and break that down to um, you know to a seven day itinerary or a short stay as well, if um, if that works. But yeah, definitely a, for a whole island, it's ten days would recommendation be. And I guess if you wanted to add add on to Melbourne's or Sydney or Brisbane stay, you know, three nights would be an easy um, easy add on. Flying into to Hobart and potentially out of Launceston, or even just into and out of one of those those major cities. Um, so yeah, we've just had another question come in saying, are there some cool activities for kids to do? Any that spring to mind for you, Nat? Uh, one that I um, love is that there are parks service is that they always quite often do stuff for kids and mainly over the school holidays but sometimes over the weekends and stuff as well so they'll run things within the national parks and activities and things like that so um, which we can always send out the details of the parks website and um, where you can find that information. What about you Bill? You've got the I do have the younger kids. Mind. Yeah so um, there's some great great museums there's an awesome one here in Hobart that has a great Antarctic um, uh, exhibition exhibit that's that's really fantastic. Um, we take our kids, I mean, we do a lot of outdoorsy stuff, but there are definitely lots of play, you know, play spaces that you can go to. There's jumping, um, you know, trampoline places and so forth, as you find in most cities. But one of the ones we love to go to is um, up in the northeast called Holly Bank, which is a great treetops adventure. Um, there's also the Tahoon Air Walk, where you can walk in high up into the trees. Um, there's some great mazes down here, Tasmania. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's lots of fun things. The other day I took the kids to have pancakes on an old train. Um, so yes, there's plenty for kids to do and yeah. we can potentially add some information. Yeah, there's Hastings Caves as well. The kids love that down um, Hosking around the caves and yes, yeah, just some, uh, even Mona, you can take the kids through to Mona. Yeah, that's love, right. They love the ferry ride out there too. There's even, the funny, on the ferry ride to Mona, they even have these fake sheep that you can sit on. I mean, everything about Mona <laughs> is fun. There's another question that's come in here. Um, good spas that can cater for small groups in the cities. Um, we certainly have some great spas attached to some of the accommodation and in Cradle Mountain and in the cities, yes. Um, oh, I think I went recently to the Savoy Baths. Um, that was really delightful. And in Dota Spa, that's yeah. a great one as well. Yeah, yeah. Launceston Baths, I believe. Yes. So yes, yes there are some some there. A Google, um, a bit of Googling might, might help you with that one, but we'll see if we can add some information. Um, a couple more here, maybe 
couple of your top must-sees in Tasmania? Oh, it's must-sees. Um, I think we've probably covered a lot of them, but yeah, definitely with the Cradle, the Wine Glass Bay, heading up the northwest um, and doing that coastline, heading out to, to Woolnorth. And we've got a place called Edge of the World, which is quite amazing too. So um, yeah, what about you, Belle? What would you add to the list? Gordon, oh, Gordon River Cruise. Definitely the Gordon River Cruise and um, Look, anywhere south of Hobart for a day trip, I think is so beautiful. The Huon Valley, which really offers just so many delightful um, little eating experiences and stops where there's um, farms and a um, lot of little honesty boxes on the side of the road where you can go and buy some apples or fresh veggies or flowers. Yeah. There are a couple more questions, Nat. Should we just have a look at these? Where is fly fishing area and what accessibility from Hobart? So I would say um, the Midlands or the what we like to call as the heartlands of Tasmania. Um, so, you know, as little as two hours from Hobart or from Launceston around an area called the Great Lakes. And we've actually got some amazing fishing um, uh, um, operators who we can we can also send you information on but if you look up the great fishing adventures of Australia you can see three of our top top opportunities but there's certainly plenty of commissionable op opportunities there's one comment as more a comment that came in that's saying that they came for seven days it definitely wasn't long enough so then it sort of backs up that uh, yeah that 10 days sort of thing but and also mentioning about the play the ship that never was at Strawn so that's another great um, asset to to the Strawn itinerary as well the longest running Australian play um, so yeah definitely a must do well in Strawn. Really gives you an insight into the convict history of, of Tasmania too doesn't it? Yeah it does and it's very interactive so it's great for, that's great for kids <laughs> definitely. And a question has come in around um, whether or not you need a New Zealand license for for Tasmania and um, and apparently that's no you don't so as long as it's um, all in English yes, yes you're fine to drive over English here. yeah um, written license that's fine yeah and you can find more information around visas um, any of that kind of utilities information on our New Zealand microsite as well so hopefully that that helps um, general across the board rate for accommodation 30 to 40 year olds. Look, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough one. I'd probably say realistically in the four to five star range, we'd be looking at 220 to 400. Yeah, Australian sure. and us. Yeah. But you know, we've we've been looking at rooms recently for for 150 to 250, which are you know really really nice yeah. rooms. How about the new some of the newer um, middle of the range? Do you know what the rates um, are? So Mo Moven Peak is uh, part of the Accor Group, and I know that they do have special rates for any Accor members as well. But um, I think that they, their leading rate was around that 200 sort of mark as well. But yeah, sort of pretty average across the board with that. That's great. Um, and someone has asked, is it recommended to fly into Hobart and fly out of Launceston? Well, I mentioned before you could do that. Obviously, there'd be have to be a drop off rate if, if with your high car if you're picking up in one city and then delivering in the other. Um, Look, I think if you were to fly into either of them, you could easily fill three days in the north or the south of the state. But in order to do the sort of, we often call it the donut, if you're flying into one and doing the, the sort of circle of Tasmania, that makes it quite easy because you're not backtracking. Um, so into and out of one of those, one of those major gateways would be fine. Um, I think that's, that's it for questions. But we do have an email address at um, trade at tourism.tas.gov.au, which will be on an email follow up that will come out to you. So if there's anything that you think of post webinar that you'd like to ask us, we're more than happy to, to answer those um, questions as they come in. Any that we have missed that might have come through that we haven't got to, we'll definitely get back to you as well. Um, but yeah, happy to ha have any questions from you and, and keep this engagement going. Yeah, we're super grateful for you taking the time out this morning and we hope that you've learned a thing or two about Tassie. Um, and as Nat said, just sing out if you've got any further questions. Yeah, it's been great having you on board. So thank you very much for joining us. And take good care and stay well. See you. Bye.